Science and technology continue to advance, giving us more opportunities to delve into the makings of our world. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent discoveries that opened up plenty of doors to future research and development. Jaguar God Cave has just been explored after remaining undisturbed. A young boy stumbled across a peculiar cave hidden and tucked away in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. He grew up, studied and became an archaeologist, when he then returned to the cave he had discovered as a child, this time as the leader of an archaeological team. While this may sound like the next Netflix original movie plot, it is in fact the very real story of Luis Ohn, the man who led the team of archaeologists whom, in 2019, explored a cave that would soon become known as the Jaguar God Cave. Before stumbling across this cave, only a few knew of its existence at all. Residents of the Mayan city, Chitsun Itza, though few in number, would have known about this thrilling cave, and Luis Un happened to wander by it as a child. Besides this very limited number of people, the cave remained a secret. That is, until 1966, when some farmers mistakenly and innocently ventured too close to the Jaguar God Cave. It was sealed with some urgency and remained untouched until Luis Un and his team of researchers made their way to the Mayan cave to explore inside. While the Jaguar God Cave is a fun, casual nickname, this cave is formally known as Balamku, or the Cave of the Jaguar God. Mayan religious and mythological sources describe a number of deities as jaguars. Generally speaking, the Mayan people viewed the jaguar as a symbol of strength and power. This coupled with the distinctive coat makes jaguars easy to spot throughout Mayan religious texts. In a cave dedicated to figures of such power, it should come as no surprise that a number of riches and ancient artifacts have been uncovered. Un's team found more than 200 ancient artifacts, including what seemed to be the remains of ceremonial food containers, incense holders, and sacred drinking items. Many of the artifacts uncovered bore the symbol of Tloc, the Mayan god of water and fertility. Guillermo de Anda, an archaeologist working at Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, explained that seven ritual chambers had been unveiled from within this cave. He stated, Balamku will help rewrite the story of Chitsun Itza, crediting the value of this discovery in part two as he described the extraordinary state of preservation. Some theorists have suggested that the artifacts have been so well preserved due to the difficulty to navigate Balamku. With corridors of only 40 centimeters in height, this is far from an easy cave for archaeologists to crawl their way to. In the uncovered artifacts, hints of various minerals and bones were observed and a full examination could prove to be incredibly valuable, presenting the next step in archaeological research, as we could have found a key to understanding a great deal more about Mayan culture in these artifacts. On our current historical timeline, the Yucatan region of caves is one of, if not the, first caves to be explored by the Mayans. Researchers operate under the premise that this is somewhere between 700 and 1000 BCE. Throughout this period, there was an extreme drought, so the discovery of the cave brought with it not only water, but a large underground network and space. Another key aspect to Mayan cultural beliefs is the notion that the further underground you are, the closer you are to various gods and deities. Caves and similar geographical structures were often considered to be an opening to the underworld. Holly Moyes, an anthropologist from the University of California, explained, they represent some of the more sacred spaces for the Maya, ones that also influenced site planning and social organization. They are fundamental, hugely important to the Maya experience. Hopefully these artifacts, when examined fully, will be able to answer some questions about the Maya people and culture, letting us learn more about the population as a whole. Extinct Hobbit Creature Found in Wyoming I am sure that plenty of us have a hobby, film or book that we get particularly excited about. It seems that for many paleontologists, this is J.R.R. Tolkien's work, particularly The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Perhaps it is a secret requirement of the field. 
For those who are unfamiliar or could benefit from some dots being connected, in Tolkien's book The Hobbit, the protagonist group, Bilbo Baggins and his crew, head out on a quest towards the Lonely Mountain. On their journey, they encounter a huge, shape-shifting warrior with the name Bjorn. In the book, Gandalf the Wizard described Bjorn as the following. Sometimes he is a huge black bear. Sometimes he is a great, strong, black-haired man with huge arms and a great beard. Well, this brute of a character has been preserved beyond the literature and cinematic depictions thanks to paleontologists, who have named a newly discovered extinct mammal after Tolkien's creature. The now extinct creature appears to have been most prominent during the Paleocene Epoch, falling between 65 and 23 million years ago, meaning it made an entrance not too long after the dinosaurs were roaming around. This mammal, known as being furry with puffy cheeks, has been named Bjornus honei, continuing an already present naming pattern of early Paleocene mammals, naming them after Tolkien creatures. Madeleine Atterbury, the lead author of the study on Bjornus Honei and a researcher at the University of Colorado Boulder stated, I have always been a huge Tolkien fan, and there is a long-standing tradition of naming early Paleocene mammals after Tolkien characters. She goes on to elaborate on why she chose Bjorn as the inspiration specifically, explaining, She chose Bjornus Honei because of the large size and inflated appearance of its teeth compared to other mammals. I'm sure throughout this description thus far, you have built an image of the Bjornus Honei up in your mind. Though, if you are picturing a big creature, similar to a bear, towering over other animals with razor-sharp teeth and claws, you would be wrong. Bjornus Honei is known as a condylarth, meaning it is one of many prehistoric four-legged mammals. These condyliths have been likened to dogs though they were the ancestors to animals such as horses and rhinos, as well as other animals with hooves, according to the information published in the Journal of Systematic Paleontology. However, Bjornus Honei was far from rhino-sized. This creature does not quite live up to the same reputation as its fearsome namesake. As the lower jaw fossils of Bjornus Honei suggest, he was in fact no bigger than a house cat. Following the reign of the dinosaurs, there were plenty of small mammals that began to rule the roost. Many condyliths were comparable to the size of a rat, making the Bjornus big by comparison. This, coupled with the large teeth and puffy cheeks, brings a little more logic to the brutish Tolkien namesake. Many small mammals thrived following the extinction of the dinosaurs, with two other condyliths, similar to Bjornus, yet distinctive by their teeth. Conocodon, Hettingeri, and Minaconus genene also recently being discovered. While the insight into the Tolkien naming tradition is entertaining, the real research and revolutionary conclusions that are being drawn here are fantastic and open up more research possibilities. Lab-grown mini-brains develop basic eyes that can see. The human brain is one of the most complex structures we know to exist. We have countless fields of study focusing on how it precisely works. From neuroscience to psychology, there are plenty of ways to begin looking into the human brain's psyche, chemical reactions, and structures. One way that has made remarkable breakthroughs as of 2021 is lab-grown mini-organs. Lab-grown mini-organs are essentially a small-scale organ, similar to the human brain, that is made and observed in a laboratory setting. The aim here is to help understand the brain better, and it goes without saying just how valuable this field of research can be. Scientists can help us see the functional processes of the brain, test and trial treatments or drugs before administering them to humans, observe the effects of disease, or even see the development and growth processes. Scientists use induced pluripotent stem cells, known as IPSCs, to create these lab-grown organs, being referred to as brain organoids. Stem cells are the golden ticket of the body's cells. They are unspecialized, meaning they can be used to create any other cell in the body with specialized functions. This makes them incredibly valuable. To create the brain organoids, skin cells obtained from adult donors are turned back into stem cells, making them generic and able to change or specialize. These stem cells are then put into a culture that aims to reflect the environment of a developing brain allowing the stem cells to specialize into brain cells. The end product, when successfully done, is a small brain model. 
As of 2021, these brain organoids have progressed one impressive stage further. A research team at the University Hospital Dusseldorf have developed these same brain organoids, but they are now all set up with optic cups, the structures in human eyes where the optic nerve joins to the retina. In more simple terms, these brain models can see. The optic cups have successfully responded to light and have sent these messages to the brain. The team found that from 314 brain organoids, 72% were able to see from these optic cups, and they developed at a rate comparable to that of human embryos developing retinas. This opens up so many more possibilities as to what these brain organoids are able to tell us. Most significantly though, by no means exclusively, brain-eye interactions. Though concerns have been expressed, if such remarkable progress continues to be made, will this research and experimentation be ethical? Science, whether it is cultural, historical or biological, is continuing to advance. With every new discovery made, more doors are open for future research and theories along with many questions. But what do you make of these discoveries and their findings behind them? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.